The upcoming version of Starship will be equipped with Raptor 3, a stunning piece of engineering that looks almost too sleek to be real. It's the latest evolution of SpaceX's high-end rocket engine, and it's already pushing the limits of what's possible. But here's the thing, SpaceX isn't stopping there. Behind the scenes, they're already planning the next version, Raptor 4. Wait, how do you even top Raptor 3? Well, here's what Elon Musk has to say about SpaceX's next-generation engine. Before we jump into SpaceX's new engine, let's rewind a bit to 2019. Back then, Elon Musk shared some concerns about the Raptor engine, saying, SpaceX Merlin architecture is simpler than staged combustion, SSME or RD, but it has world record for thrust weight and thrust cost engine. Raptor has better ISP, but I'm worried it may fall short on those two critical metrics. So what was he talking about? The Merlin engine's design philosophy is all about simplicity and practicality. It uses what's called a gas generator cycle, where a small portion of the fuel and oxidizer is burned in a separate pre-burner to power the turbo pumps. The exhaust from that process is just vented away, which wastes a bit of energy, but it keeps things much simpler. Lower pressures, fewer moving parts, and easier manufacturing all make Merlin cheaper, lighter, and more reliable. Despite its simplicity, Merlin is a beast. It holds records for both thrust-to-weight and thrust-to-cost ratios, meaning it delivers more punch for its mass and more thrust for every dollar spent than any other engine out there. And because SpaceX mass-produces it so efficiently, it's incredibly cost-effective. Raptor, on the other hand, plays in a different league. It uses a full-flow staged combustion cycle, one of the most advanced rocket engine designs ever built. In this setup, all of the propellant runs through two pre-burners, one fuel-rich, one oxidizer-rich, before entering the main combustion chamber. This squeezes out every bit of performance, giving Raptor a much higher specific impulse, ISP, which means it uses fuel more efficiently. The trade-off is that Raptor runs at much higher pressures, needs tougher materials, and involves far more intricate plumbing. That makes it heavier and costlier to produce, at least until manufacturing is fully streamlined. That's what Musk meant when he worried that Raptor might fall short on thrust-to-weight and thrust-to-cost compared to Merlin. Raptor's efficiency was better, but its bang-for-buck and lightness per thrust weren't quite there yet. Fast forward six years, and Elon's tune has changed. He recently posted an update on X, proudly saying, Raptor 3 will probably be two to four times better than Merlin in ton of thrust and will exceed Merlin in thrust-to-weight ratio. Raptor 4 should beat Merlin by 10 times in tons of thrust, with further improvement in TWR and ISP. That statement from Musk actually reveals two really exciting things. First, the long-awaited Raptor 3, the next-generation engine everyone's eager to see in action. And second, a brand new version that not many people have heard of yet, Raptor 4. When Musk says Raptor 3 will be two to four times better than Merlin in ton of thrust, he's talking about cost efficiency. In simple terms, for every ton of thrust it produces, Raptor 3 will be two to four times cheaper to manufacture than Merlin. That means a lot more power for a lot less money. He also says Raptor 3 will exceed Merlin in thrust to weight ratio, which is another big deal. It means the engine will produce more thrust for its own mass, so it's both lighter and stronger than the current Merlin. Then comes Raptor 4, which takes things even further. Musk claims it will be over 10 times cheaper per ton of thrust than Merlin, with even better thrust-to-weight ratio and higher specific impulse, a measure of how efficiently a rocket uses fuel. In plain English, each new Raptor version is becoming dramatically cheaper, lighter, and more efficient than the engines powering rockets today. It's a clear sign of just how fast SpaceX's propulsion technology is evolving. Raptor 4 isn't in production or flight testing yet, but Musk has outlined ambitious goals for it. The focus is on extreme cost efficiency and performance, key to building large fleets of reusable starships. He's mentioned that the Raptor 3 series, and by extension, Raptor 4's vacuum-optimized version, could achieve a specific impulse of around 380 seconds, thanks in part to an enlarged nozzle designed for maximum efficiency in space. For context, Raptor 3 has already reached a record-breaking chamber pressure of 350 bar, 
and Raptor 4 is expected to push that even higher, further cementing SpaceX's lead in engine performance. The Raptor line has also been getting steadily lighter with each iteration. The original Raptor 1 weighed about 2,000 kilograms, Raptor 2 dropped to 1,600 kilograms, and Raptor 4 is estimated to come in around 1,500 kilograms. Combine that with a massive 330 tons of thrust, and you get a thrust-to-weight ratio of roughly 220, well above the Merlin 1D's 180. That difference is huge. A higher TWR means greater acceleration and efficiency, both critical for reusable spacecraft. Taken together, these improvements make Raptor 4 not just an incremental upgrade, but one of the most advanced and capable rocket engines ever built. To achieve this kind of immense power, SpaceX is likely sticking with the approach they've used so far, pushing chamber pressures higher and higher. Higher chamber pressure directly boosts the thrust-to-weight ratio, which is key for making the rocket perform better, but it also cranks up the temperature inside the combustion chamber to levels that could potentially damage or even melt engine components. To handle that, SpaceX is experimenting with advanced materials, custom alloys, and improved cooling techniques to make sure everything survives the extreme conditions. Their design philosophy still favors simplicity, like integrated cooling channels that reduce the number of separate parts. They're also likely to keep Raptor 3's pipeless architecture, where all the plumbing is built into the engine body. This reduces mass and lowers the number of potential failure points. SpaceX may even try to integrate or remove more parts, but let's be honest, this is SpaceX we're talking about. They've pulled off impossible engineering twice already. If they do remove anything, it's probably the heavy bolted flange between the thrust chamber and hot gas manifold, which Elon has mentioned will become a welded joint. That small change alone could save weight and improve reliability, a classic SpaceX move finding clever ways to make engines lighter, simpler, and tougher. Some of you might be wondering, does SpaceX really need that much power from an engine? Well, the short answer is absolutely. Even though Starship is already massive, Elon's always pushing to make it bigger and capable of carrying more cargo to Mars. Right now, there's actually a bit of a friendly rivalry inside SpaceX. The Raptor engine team is trying to squeeze every last drop of performance out of what's already the best rocket engine ever built, while the Starship fuselage team keeps adding another 10 tons of dry mass for them to push around. Like Elon mentioned, one of SpaceX's biggest goals with the Raptor program is cost reduction. At one point, he even said the target price for a Raptor engine is under $250,000. That's an incredibly ambitious goal, but not completely out of reach in the long run. Right now, the raw materials alone make up a big chunk of that price. The high nickel super alloys used in the combustion chambers and nozzles can cost close to $100,000 per engine. Then there are the high-end components, things like engine controllers, pressure transducers, and rotational sensors, all designed to survive brutal conditions, cryogenic temperatures, intense vibrations, and extreme pressures. Each one of those parts also needs to go through extensive testing and qualification, which adds even more cost. Automation will definitely help bring costs down by cutting manual labor, but it's not a silver bullet. In many ways, automation just shifts the human work toward designing, programming, and maintaining the machines that do the building. What really drives prices down is mass production, the same strategy that made Falcon 9 and Merlin engines so affordable. That's where Raptor 4 comes in. It's expected to have a simpler, more streamlined design, with more parts integrated into single assemblies. Fewer joints and bolts mean fewer potential failure points, and less time spent on assembly and maintenance. The engine will also be built to be tougher and more reusable, designed to fly multiple times with minimal refurbishment. All of that helps lower the cost per launch over time. Reaching the $250,000 mark might still be a few iterations away, but it's not impossible. In the near term, a more realistic estimate for Raptor 4 is around $500,000 per engine. Even that would represent a massive step forward, cutting costs dramatically compared to earlier versions and pushing SpaceX closer to its ultimate goal of affordable, fully reusable spaceflight. All that really shows how important the Raptor engine is to SpaceX and the Starship program. It's the first operational, full-flow, staged combustion cycle engine, using cryogenic liquid methane and liquid oxygen as propellants. 
This choice allows for higher efficiency, cleaner combustion, meaning less soot buildup and better reusability, and even the ability to produce fuel on Mars, where methane can be made from local CO2 and water. Raptor engines are designed for rapid reusability, with the goal of thousands of flights per engine. They use advanced manufacturing methods like 3D printed components and in-house super alloys, for example, SX500, to handle the extreme pressures and temperatures. Each new Raptor iteration has improved in thrust, specific impulse, thrust to weight ratio, and manufacturability. Early versions were all about development milestones, while later ones focus more on reducing mass and boosting performance, all to support Starship's bigger goals like orbital refueling, lunar landings, and Mars colonization. Meanwhile, it seems like Rocket Lab's new reusable rocket, Neutron, has slipped on the timeline by a few months. The inaugural flight of their medium lift launcher is now planned for 2026 instead of this year. According to the company, they need a bit more time for additional testing and qualification work. Rocket Lab CEO Peter Beck announced the schedule change during the company's Q3 earnings call on November 10th. He said the goal is to have Neutron rolled out to launch Complex 3 at the Virginia Spaceport Authority's Mid Atlantic Regional Spaceport, Mars, in the first quarter of 2026 with the first launch happening shortly after that. As always, this is a rocket program that's been completed at a pace and a cost that nobody has achieved before, and the financial and long-term impacts are insignificant to take a little bit more time to get it right, Beck told investors. Without calling anyone out directly, Beck hinted that some other companies have rushed to the launch pad before being truly ready, something Rocket Lab doesn't plan to do. He emphasized that their focus is on achieving a fully successful first flight and making it to orbit without issues. You won't see us minimizing some qualifier about just clearing the pad and calling it a success, Beck said. We don't want to learn something during Neutron's first flight that we could have learned on the ground during testing. He added that Neutron will only fly once the team is fully confident it's ready, saying, we're not going to break the mold of the Rocket Lab magic. While Neutron, a 141-foot-tall, 43-meters, two-stage reusable rocket, is designed for recovery and reuse, that won't be part of the first flight's objectives. Rocket Lab is still working on its 400-foot-long landing barge called Return on Investment, which is expected to support Neutron's second launch. Beck also shared an update on the Archimedes engines, which will use methane and liquid oxygen to produce 1.5 million pounds of thrust at liftoff. The engines are currently undergoing validation and qualification testing at NASA's Stennis Space Center in Mississippi, running on an intense schedule, 20 hours a day, 7 days a week. The only way you can get through years of qualification that are always expected for an engine program is to squeeze years of hours into months, Beck said. As you can imagine, no weekends or evenings are left on the table at the Stennis test facility, 